I made fun of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show a lot in a previous video, but I actually do sort of like the show and did like the show as a kid, but the Legend of Zelda cartoon, I've always been under the impression that it was not so good. But to be fair, I have never seen it, so in the spirit of Zelda month, let's all watch the first episode and see how it goes. Let's do it. The show starts off with an intro that reveals, in similar fashion to the original Zelda game, Ganon has stolen the Triforce of Power and seeks to claim the second piece of the Triforce, the Triforce of Wisdom, so that he can... I don't know, be all evil and stuff. There's some cool action scenes set to a pretty intense remix of the Zelda theme song. It all looks relatively promising. That is, until this happens. Nice job, hero! Hey! Excuse me, princess! Huh. Good. This'll be good. If you only know one thing about the Legend of Zelda cartoon, chances are it probably is the previously stated Excuse Me Princess. Let me just get this out of the way now. In similar fashion to the Italian food jokes in the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, this gag is repeated a lot. These old Deke cartoons really do enjoy running certain jokes to the ground. So we're off to a great start, clearly. We then learn that Link is now living in Hyrule Castle, where he partakes in one of his new hobbies, complaining. Another beautiful day in the magical kingdom of Hyrule. Boring place. Aren't I sweet? Yeah. And at that moment, every Zelda fan in 1989 let out a collective sigh of disappointment. But complaining isn't Link's only hobby, he also enjoys the company of Princess Zelda. A little bit too much. <gasps> Looking good, Princess. Especially from this angle. Because nothing says likable hero more than undesired harassment. But before you can ponder for too long about whether you want to keep watching this show or not, moblins appear! Apparently, we're supposed to believe that creatures this clumsy and inept were somehow able to sneak into the castle completely undetected. After needlessly toying around with them for a while, Link kills the Moblins, creepily mentions how he enjoys killing people, which is for some reason an admirable trait, and picks up a magic bow that was dropped during the battle. Zelda then shows up to punch Link in the face, which is so far my favorite part of the episode, actually. Excuse me, princess. Link explains what happens, and Zelda seems surprisingly unalarmed, especially considering the following line. This is the third attack by Ganon this month. And then she makes her exit to judge a very crucial magician's contest, leaving Link alone to protect the Triforce of Wisdom. You know, the thing in the intro that's essential to protect not only Hyrule, but the entire world from... The evil forces of Ganon. Thanks, King. Yeah, let's just leave this one annoying kid to protect it. It's probably fine. This makes Link mad. And Ganon's mad too. Sorry, Ganon. Evidently, the Moblins aren't actually dead. But Ganon kills them again, so now they're really dead this time, maybe? I guess. So Ganon decides that if he's gonna get the Triforce, he's gonna have to do it himself. And he pulls a Robin Hood, or an Odysseus if you prefer Greek epics, and disguises himself in order to join the aforementioned Amateur Magicians Contest. But you're no amateur. You're a pro. Uh, what was that? Was that the Triforce of Power talking? I guess the Triforce can talk now for whatever reason. And on top of that, he sounds very manly. Oh no, the tomato, it's getting big. to laugh at me. Oh yeah, Zelda is pretty annoying too, actually. I just forgot to mention it because I was too busy with, you know, this one. Oh no, some guy is here to enter the contest and it is obviously Ganon, but nobody knows that it is Ganon. Quickly, fly to the tower and tell me if anyone guards the Triforce of Wisdom. Okay, he's standing around in the middle of all of these people. Did nobody hear that? Attempting to distract Link from his Triforce guarding duties, Ganon turns a small lizard into a dragon that I suppose is supposed to be Aquamentis and orders it to attack Zelda. 
Um, okay, I guess this is why Zelda keeps Link around. Even if he is incredibly obnoxious, at least he doesn't run away when the princess is in imminent danger. This guy doesn't even lead her away from the dragon, he just hightails it straight out of there. So here comes Link to save the day. And his skill to miraculously avoid injury despite doing very little is matched only by his clever and questionably timed puns. But Zelda is no mere damsel in distress. She quickly jumps to Link's aid by throwing a plate? Okay, wow! That was either very impressive or completely improbable and kind of dumb. And I'm leaning towards the latter. Link helped save Zelda's life, but big surprise, she's mad at him anyway. Well, excuse me, princess. With the Triforce now protected only by the fairy named Sprite, oh yeah, I forgot to mention there's a fairy named Sprite, Ganon goes off to steal it. And he sure takes his sweet time picking it up, and then once he does finally pick it up, he screams at the top of his lungs just in case he was being a little too sneaky. Mine! All mine! But the Triforce of Wisdom also has something to say about this whole thing. Evil is the path you choose. But evildoers always lose. Oh, burn! Lay down that truth bomb! Ganon's got the Triforce of Wisdom! And he's getting away! We'll never catch him now! Well, you certainly won't if you just keep sitting there. But no worry, Zelda steps in with another completely foolproof and totally not illogical plan. My kind of girl! Uh, his mouth didn't move there. Are we just gonna let that go? Yes? Okay then. Whee! How are we going to get down? Wait, I have no idea. I thought this was your plan. <laughs> they're okay, but they're gonna have to fight some Stalfos now. So Link straps himself back to back with Zelda, which definitely would not work as well as it's working in this scene here. Get them like this. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I didn't realize that Ganon was such a moron. Seriously, he sounds like a little kid trying to impress his friends with his awesome punching moves. Just when it looks like our heroes are in trouble, Ganon throws a bomb and kills some more of his own men. Thanks, Ganon. But do we? But uh oh, another bomb. A bomb, and I'm out of sub bolts. But you shot him once. You only had one. Also, what is a zap bolt? Oh well, whatever. Link kills the guy anyway because he's so cool and stuff. Ganon then implements his ultimate strategy, running away. But alas, it was not meant to be because baseball bomb. And since Link and Zelda are already tied together, they might as well finally kiss. No. What's that, Zelda? You don't want to kiss him? No. Well, that's too bad, because Link's seemingly not going to untie her until she does. Just when it looks like Link is finally going to get his way, the fairy character that no one cares about shows up to spoil his fun. Because, oh yeah, again, she likes Link something something generic and contrived. Yay. The end. So, yeah. I can't really say that it's terrible, but there's just something odd about this cartoon. It has the same goofy antics that the Super Mario Bros. Super Show has, but it just doesn't seem to work as well in the Legend of Zelda universe as it does in the Mario universe. And then there's also the Link problem. His character actively wants to fight and even enjoys violence and death, which is fine. I see why they did it, but it just doesn't seem to represent the character of Link very well. As previously mentioned, this show only had the first two Zelda games to go off of, so maybe I'm being a bit too hard on it, but I think what makes Link an admirable hero is that he never seeks action and glory. He was simply ready and willing to fight for others because he was placed in a bad situation and or he just knew it was the right thing to do. I guess it makes sense for a silly cartoon, but the whole thing, especially from a 2014 Zelda perspective, just seems very unfitting and antiquated. Antiquated. Continued from, resembling, or adhering to the past. Old fashioned. But I would be lying to you if I said that I didn't enjoy watching this at least a little bit. I mean, I'm definitely the type of person that can enjoy goofiness, and if I had watched this as a kid, I probably would have liked it. I mean, I watched a lot of other cartoons that followed a pretty similar format. And I guess I'll end it off with that. But before I go, why don't you all join in with me for one last, 
Well, excuse me, Prince, actually. Let's, let's not do that. It's kind of dumb. Bye-bye. Want some clothes for your bod? Well, I have some for you. Check them out in the description below. They're available only in November, and the bundle deal is only for two weeks, so you better get on it. That's all. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching this video. The second Zelda month video is done. Put it in the books or whatever, wherever you put videos. I don't, I don't know. If you enjoyed this video, then help share it around and let me know what you think in the comments and all that good stuff. If you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe. That was weird. That was weird that I did that. If you want to know what's going on around town, then you can follow me on my social medias, Facebook, Twitter, sometimes even Tumblr. I don't know if you use that kind of thing. Watch last week's Zelda video by clicking right here. And you know what, guys? That's pretty much it. I'll see you next week with another Zelda video, hopefully. I mean, I will. I will. Next week. Saturday. Bye-bye! Oh.